Oh yeah, this is start of vlog number two. I'm just picking my mate Brad up. We're gonna go and grab a coffee before work. All right, Brad. All right. Yes, coffee. Yes, coffee. Today I want to discuss piston ring gaps. This is a Toyota Starlet turbo block which I bored and refaced for a customer. It's all washed. He also wants the, the rings gapping. It's quite an important job. It needs to be done cylinder to cylinder. Uh, number one's missing because I've already done them. It's important to know what gap that you need to run. So normally when you buy the pistons, it will come with a sheet to show you what they recommend. Ours is forced induction. So there's a little calculation of what you can do. So the top ring would be a gap of around 16 thousandths of an inch. And the second ring needs to be a gap of around 19 thousandths of an inch maximum. That there is a second ring, it's a different material to the top ring, it's a ductile material. That there is a chrome top ring. So I'll show you now how to make sure that the ring is square in the bore. Um, make sure we know what gap we're running and how to adjust it on the, on the ring file. So when doing the rings, one of the important things to check is when you close the ring up, it closes up nice and parallel. It's really important to keep these cylinder by cylinder, as I said earlier. The reason being is a couple of tenths different on the ball can change the piston ring gap. Another good trick is to use the piston to make sure it's sat nice and square in the ball. look to see that the gap looks nice and square and then measure you can end up flying through this quite quick so that there's a really nice fit and that is, I don't know if you can see it, 16 thou, which is what it recommends for the second ring. So that's okay. And then we get the top ring once again. Make sure it squeezes up nice and square. Use the piston to true it. Get the feeler gauges. And just keep measuring away. Yeah, that's a little bit too tight at that. So this one needs opening up a little bit. So we take the ring out. And this part of this machine is what you use to square the, the face of the ring and you get the ring sitting nice and square you look for a shadow on this back edge and flick that back you move this knob back because that there controls how much you're going to take off the ring so we just move it back away from zero so the ring isn't touching the bore uh, the stone sorry Switch the machine on. And carefully bring the ring to the stone. And just reset the zero. You want to take about a thousandth of an inch off this.
then we check it for we check it for burrs what you don't really want to do is on this face here you don't want to hit this too hard with a file because you don't want to put too much of a chamfer on it that can really affect the the um, breathing of the engine so you want to keep that pretty square you want to just run some I just run a little bit of emery across that just in case there is any burr on there so it doesn't scratch the bore and then on this back edge you want to make sure there's no burr on that because that can affect the gap when it's installed into the piston so once again just really delicately take that off and then with a nice square file just check that there's nothing on the top and the bottom of the ring then reinstall it and recheck your gap so for this Toyota block that's them done that's them packaged back in in order uh, remember the important things about piston ring gaps is to to know what gap you want to run and then to remember to keep the uh, ring in the bore square so use something to square the piston ring in the bore and to make sure that the gap is parallel um, you're not putting a big chamfer on it that's a no-no and then just keep every cylinder individual so number one stays with number one number two stays with number two hi it's tuesday the 6th of april today first job in is a pressure test and a skim on a tractor cylinder head here it is i'm going to be doing this on the delta machine first job is to clean all the oil off the top of it so we'll just do that with a flat block and emery so i've cleaned the top off next thing to do is to set the machine up so once the cylinder head is on the delta we then start to block all the waterways uh, there there we need one waterway to send the compressed air in and then everything else needs blocking So this has all been done, it's pressure tested okay, um, I'm pretty sure it's really badly warped, uh, we had to, you know, to pack out this, this bar here to get these two pads to seal. Um, this is running at 30 psi, so I should imagine the rad cap on this tractor would probably, it's probably 13 psi, so we've gone way beyond double that. This trough in here is, is the pads that's leaking. There's, there's nothing coming from the casting. There's nothing coming from the core plugs. So uh, I'll take it off and uh, get ready to skim it. So I've got the cylinder head mounted onto the head skimmer. This is cast iron, so it would be ground with the stone segments. Which are underneath there. So that's in there now so I'm just gonna give it a wash for half an hour and then while that's washing I'll show you the next job of the day this is a, a Vauxhall Astro I believe um, cylinder head that I'm I'm just reconditioning for a local garage uh, but one of the issues it's got is it's uh, got no threads in that exhaust face there 
it's got a broken stud there and a broken stud there so um, I'll, I'll clean these other threads up as well while I'm there so that's the next job while the while the tractor's um, in the wash well here it is all the threads are cleaned I've had to replace the two threads in here um, had a nightmare with this one a uh, drill bit broke and where they're good quality snap-on um, drill bits I had to machine it out but it's out now and there's a new insert in that one and that one there the customer had pulled the threads out managed to get that one out there's the um, little bit of thread So now I can carry on reconditioning this. Um, I'll put the video of, of it up being reconditioned in a, in another vlog. I'm going to go and work on my son's race car now for an hour, so I'll uh, I'll, I'll show you that. See you, mate. Look at the snow. Look at the snow. This is Brad's race car, out in two weeks, testing, three weeks racing, first race. This is a really lovely, no expense spared built car. And then this is my son's first race car, thrown together. So I'm back home, uh, this is the end of my second vlog, um, got lots done this week, everything's gone out that I needed to get out, there's a few more jobs that I've got to get done next week, my race car come back so that'll be in the next vlog, um, I'm going to do a bit of work on my Escort now, as it's Sunday, I'm going to put a new ECU dashboard switch panel in it, so um, I'll vlog that as well. Sam's washing me van for me. Um, yeah, Sam's washing the van, his mate's here. He's got to finish his race car next week. Everyone have a good week. So, stopping for a quick bite of dinner. looks like dog food but it actually tastes quite nice I'm on a diet at the moment because I'm racing so my wife's hooked me up with some diet food Man